Hello everybody, welcome back to Resinet. Today we are going to be making this mold that I just got from Amazon and I'm super excited to see it. It is a called an angry angry dog I think is the name the term of it. So what I decided I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of my Lares snow or angel white um, pigment paste to give this kind of a nice white color here. I've got six ounces made up. Hoping that's going to be enough. This dog's kind of large, large capacity in there. But um, I thought this would be kind of a pretty color for this. I'm going to try just to make a little bit of a marble effect. Kind of a white and gray, I mean white and black marble. So what I do when I do that, there's all different kinds of techniques of how people do their marble. But if I'm going to do a pour like this, and this is kind of a wider mold, okay, and it's fairly deep. So I suggest that you do this one in layers. Um, I'm going to pour it whole, very likely. But um, I will turn on my, my cooling fan and aim it towards this to kind of help it... Um, not get a flash cure and it's also fairly pretty cool here in my studio so there's that and my lid back on my Lares. now what i want to do with this is i don't want very much black i'm going to do just a drop like that okay well it comes out pretty fast so it's more than a drop but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stir it like this. Okay, see how it's turning kind of a marbly color? I don't want all the black to go in first, even though it could be that way. But you see here on the sides, kind of a marble look. I'm going to give it a quick spray of alcohol down in here because he does have ears down in there. I thought this <laughs> might be just kind of a cute little mascot. I have an English bulldog. And so when I saw this mold, it made me think of our dog. Her name is Gertie. And um, well, her name's Gertrude, but we call her Gertie unless she's in trouble. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought, okay, I've got to try this one. Okay, so there is that. And then we're going to take this and we're just going to go ahead and pour and hope that we get kind of a nice marbly effect. You can see as it's going in, it's kind of staying pretty separate. It's not blending together. We didn't, um, we did not stir it very well. So there goes some of the white. Okay, so that is going to take. Let's see here. Okay. That took just about all of it. I think we've got about a half of an ounce left in there. So that was a pretty good, pretty good thought. Okay, so now it's full. I'm going to set it over and put it in front of my fan and let it cool. And then we'll demold it. And I'm excited to see it. All right, I will see you then. Okay, I am back. This is completely cured. It sat out overnight and I'm kind of excited to see it. I don't know that we'll get too much of a marbling effect. Some of the colors have kind of blended in together a little bit, but, um, but we should still have somewhat of an effect. And again, it's this is one of those stretchy molds, which is just, I say glorious, but much easier to get out of here. This is a matte finish mold. So there's no, um, no shiny finish on it on the inside, which is fine with me for this little statue. See, I'm, it's going to be kind of a little, you know, I'm going to have to really stretch that out to get his big old head out of here. But still don't think I'm going to need any kind of alcohol, but gosh, I don't know. Even though this is stretchy, I want to be careful. I don't want to rip my mold. Yeah, I'm going to have to spray just a little bit in there. 
stretchy, but still a bit tight. Go down this side. There we go. Break the mold on, break the seal around this. Here it working in there. Okay, much easier. Much, much easier to get him out this way. Alcohol helps. There he is. I'm gonna turn this upside down, let it dry. Grab my paper towel, get the alcohol off of him real quick. I see some kind of porous bubbles in here, around here in the back of his head. Uh, that's when a pressure pot or a pressure chamber would come in really handy, handy, or I mean a pressure pot or a vacuum chamber would come in handy or something like that, but that's okay. All right, so here's the little back of him. Let's go ahead and turn him over and see. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. So when they say angry, they're not kidding. That is so cool. Okay, so this little spot here is actually part of like the dye and the marbling effect. It's not, it looks kind of like a bubble, but it's not. And then we got some color down in here. But you know what? It just gives my little angry guy some personality. Now, I might go ahead and do his eyes. I and mean, you could just leave them like this, but kind of feel like that I want to do some little black eyes on him. They're kind of set down inside there where I feel like it would be kind of easy to get to. This would be a good one to do. This little fine tip sharpie would be good to outline his mouth. But I'm looking for a black paint pen here for his eyes. Here we go. I think that one probably better. Let's see. Yep, that someone has already been going. Let's get this. Let's get this going here. There we go. So let's go in and do his little eyes. I'm going to put my glasses on real quick. I have just my little reading glasses. This helps me stay in the lines. Okay, let's see here if I can do this. I have to finish it up with that fine tip marker because I don't want to go, I don't want to get the sides of his head. Okay. Let's go ahead and do his nose. This has definitely got some expression, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm going to see if I can come in here and finish this up. This is just a little bit fat. Get this little fine tip mark pen here to go. Finish up his eyes. There's his little eyes and his nose. Let's go ahead and do his little frowny face. All right. There he is. Oh my goodness. Okay, so he's got he's got personality galore. And this was kind of fun. Gosh, you could just do him in just about any kind of color. Um, you don't have to paint his face. The little statue is just as cute as it can be, even without it. 
Um, but I actually just noticed, I think, I do want to come in and do his little paw pads. Kind of bring in all of this together. Since I'm doing his face, and it helps to add a little black down here. The little paw pads are raised, so it makes it pretty easy just to kind of follow the lines. There is his little feet. And you could even take it another step further and take your white paint marker. You really want to and do just tiny little tips of his toenails. Will probably barely show. It's okay. I don't really want, he doesn't have long toenails. I just want him to have well groomed little bits of toenails. There we go. I'm not going to do any white on his eyes. Okay. I think he's pretty much done. And he is just ready. <laughs> he's just ready to sit up somewhere. And yeah, he, he's just cute. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you for joining me in this. And um, yeah, definitely a lot of little micro bubbles through here. And the reason I believe that I got these micro bubbles is because when I mixed the white together with the black and I didn't mix it very well, um, you're just kind of prone to get more bubbles that way. But um, I don't care. I think he's just adorable. It actually makes it kind of look like a cement, like a little cement statue, actually. So it's okay with me. I'll try it again. I'll probably do a solid color the next time. I don't think I'll do him in a translucent color because I noticed on those little southern bell dolls that i did that they kind of lost i feel like some of their detail with the translucent i feel like they almost need a solid opaque color for the detail to come out but anyway just my thoughts all right guys let me know what you think see if he looks pretty angry i will see you all next time